Hey guys, welcome back to New Stuff TV, the untechnical tech channel. I'm your host, Antoine. How many TVs does Sony make right now, Richardson? Because today we're going to kind of figure that out. I got my special guest here, Rob Brennan from Sony. We got the voice of Sony here talking to us today, and he's just kind of going to walk us through maybe... Imagine yourself in, you know, the store, Best Buy or something like that. You're looking at all these TVs on the wall. You don't know which one to pick. So that's what he's for. He's going to help us kind of figure this stuff out, the differences between them. So how you doing, Rob? I'm doing great, Antoine. I appreciate you uh, doing this video. I think it's it's great information for customers. And of course, uh, a chance to sit down and talk with you is always a lot of fun. Oh, man, I'm so glad you're here. Thanks. I really appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. Um, yeah. So basically, uh, I was telling you earlier that I truly was in Best Buy one day and I, I personally own a 65 inch Bravia X90L and I think it's a fantastic TV. I love it. We watch it all the time. But I'm in here looking at the sound bars and I see all the TVs on the wall and I see a chart at the bottom of them. And that TV sits right in the middle of that chart. There's like a whole bunch to the left and a whole bunch to the right. And I'm like, wow, how does a person actually choose a TV? Uh, from the 2022, 23, uh, 2023 lineup. So I was like, man, I got to talk to somebody. Somebody's got to, somebody's got to know. <laughs> so if yeah. I want, um, let's say if I'm shopping, I want a 65 to maybe, ooh, dare I say 85 inch TV. Oh, you dare. And what was that? You dare. Yeah, absolutely. You should say that. Yeah. Right. But I, the content I watch, it's always streaming. I'm, you know, we're always on like something like stars or max peacock or something like that. Cause you know, Google TV and stuff. So we're watching movies. We're watching some of those series shows like on Netflix. So what, what kind of TV would be best for a guy like me? You know, that's a fantastic question. As, and as I mentioned, you know, it can be overwhelming, not just within Sony's lineup, but yeah, you go to a brick and mortar retailer like Best Buy or, you know, your preferred, you know, local TV shop. And you're going to see a lineup like that from a lot of different manufacturers. So um, I'll talk a little bit specifically about Sony, but hopefully I can give you some in your audience, you know, some general things to consider when thinking about just TV, you know, overall. Um, streaming, as you mentioned, is obviously becoming almost ubiquitous, like everybody is doing it, um, but it is growing. And, you know, not only is it growing, but it's also growing in a very particular way um, where, you know, consumers are interested in, in enjoying like premium content, you know, whether it's day and date release or, you know, premium video rental uh, from their streaming services. So it's not just convenience. It's also now, you know, more quality. Um, there are two major things to think about when it comes to television. Um, now for every customer, their particular needs are going to be a little bit different. Uh, but I think there are two kind of key questions that you should ask. If you are streaming a lot of content, uh, the first thing that you want to keep in mind is that that content is being um, owned on a server somewhere on the cloud and it's being sent out to you. I don't know if you were watching Game, in the Th Game of Thrones back in the day, um, but the um, uh, in the final season, right, the big, uh, the big battle of Winterfell at night, um, that you couldn't see anything. Uh, part of that was a result of kind of cinematic uh, uh, choices and how it was, how it was shot. The, the most of the information was communicated in, in like black level and shadow detail, but also everyone was streaming it at one time. So everyone's piece of like the bandwidth pie was tiny. So all of that is to say that processing, how the actual uh, video stream is analyzed by the television, how it can be improved, um, whether it's going to be upscaled or whether the, the kind of the noise, um, whether it's MPEG block noise or what we call mosquito noise or dot crawl, uh, that's a result of video compression. How well can we identify that in the in the source stream and then clean it up, you know, on the, on the television so you get higher quality? So processing is a major indication uh -oh. uh, or factor for streamers. That's happening in real time. The TV is actually clean. Yeah, up yeah, that that's it. yeah, yeah, that's happening in real time. And wow. so, in the case of Sony, you know, specifically, again, e manufacturers each have have processors and. I'm not here to speak, you know, kind of on, on their behalf, but how Sony processors work in our televisions, um, we, have a, we have two tiers of processors in our TVs, essentially. Um, but fundamentally what it does is based on AI and machine learning, we've trained the processors. Um, Sony's been building processors for our televisions for the past 27 years. They're designed in-house, they're manufactured in-house, um, and it will analyze the incoming video signal and look for things like 
the difference between uh, noise that's a result of compression and film grain, right? So if something's shot on analog film or if it's shot digitally, sometimes a director will add digital kind of, kind of grain or film noise. Um, so it looks uh, less kind of um, clinical, right? It looks a little softer. And we want to know that you need to identify the difference between those things. Yeah, sometimes that noise is is intentional. And so okay. the processor needs to be able to identify the difference, right? Gotcha. Uh, and then, of course, there's just video upscaling. When you buy a television today, it's 4K mm -hmm. and may, maybe 8K. But, you know, for the most part, it's a 4K TV. But not all the movies that you watch or TV shows that you watch were shot in 4K. Sometimes, you know, you want to go back and wax nostalgia, right? And, mm -hmm. uh, and watch the original A Team. Uh, or if you, to show you my age, Airwolf, which is A Team, oh, but with a helicopter instead of a van, you know? Yeah. Uh, and of course, you know, that stuff is super low resolution, but the TV is going to display it in 4K. So it's got to be upscaled. Um, and, you know, upscalers have become, of course, very advanced. So, you know, long story short, processing um, is more important as the quality of the video signal that you're 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 watching decreases right so mm -hmm. if you are streaming older shows if you're streaming from you know less premium services uh then um processing becomes more and more and more important processing can help with really high quality video like 4k blu-ray disc but that's already a really good source so that's one thing to keep in mind is the more of affinity you have for over-the-air content, the more affinity you have for streaming content, the more you should consider um, how that uh, video signal needs to be processed and cleaned up. So that's okay. one of the major considerations I, I talk to a lot of uh, customers about. It's okay. also, I think, um, the, the single most important piece of your television is your processor because it, in addition to fixing the picture, controls all the other components you know, around it. So it's gonna gotcha. make, it's going to control your color. It's going to control your contrast system. It's going to analyze and reproduce audio. So it's a really important factor in your television's performance. So that XR processor is the X90L. Is that where that processor is that the first TV that it's being put in as far as the tiers? Right. So it comes in at that, that X90 level. So below that, we have what I call our foundation line. There are three models. In it. There's the X85 the X80 and the X77. Um, and these are good televisions. They tend to focus a little bit more on value. Mm -hmm. uh, so they have basically our last generation processor, still a very solid processor by, you know, by any stretch of the imagination. But with the XR processor that's in the X90, and I apologize, there's a lot of Xs here, right? The XR mm -hmm. processor in the X90 and above, we fundamentally changed how the processor works. So it's become a better detective. It is better at identifying things it needs to fix. The tools that it has at its disposal to fix things are the same tools that the X1 processor has. Gotcha, okay. And I have to say, uh, I haven't experienced any of the other tiers you were just talking about, um, the 85 and stuff like that. But what I the, the first thing I noticed with the, um, the X90L with the XR processor was the fluidity of it. It just works. You know, when you when you tap a button on a remote, the TV moves. Something happens. That that made that actually put a smile on my face because I've experienced some some TVs where you're just you know it's almost like when you're on a computer. You hit like ten buttons and the computer just says what and it freezes up. You know. <laughs> yeah. yeah come, <laughs> what do you want me to do? Up. What do you want me to do? Come back in five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. You you know you. You know, and, and, and I totally understand, you know, customers at the end of the day, you know, we've gotten spoiled, right? You know, we've, mm -hmm. we, we have smartphones in our pocket. You, 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 you know, you, you're jumping all over apps. You're, you're, you're responding to a text and you're following an Instagram story and you have a YouTube page going and you got a website up. Um, and it's kind of this fast kind of quick rapid access. And so we, we expect that kind of experience on, on all of our products, right? And so it, it it is more noticeable, right? With when a TV can't deliver that um, that kind of snappy, you know, experience. Now I will point out that when I say processor, I'm I'm within a TV there are multiple chips, right? That do different things. Um, the XR processor or the X1 processor, which is on those again foundation lines, 
that's more about controlling, um, analyzing the incoming video, you know, sending information to the backlight system or controlling kind of the color, um, how your operating system kind of runs. Mm -hmm. uh, that's actually based on something called SOC so, or system on chip. Mm -hmm. So it's like another, you know, chip that just runs the operating system. You know, it's got a cache of memory, you know, allocated to it to kind of handle those things. Um, okay. th but there are different components in, in, in televisions that will control different, different parts. Uh, oh, so definitely schooling me right now. Cause I thought it was all, yeah, the same you know, <laughs> why do I, you know, there's th this rabbit hole, you know, it, it goes deep, it goes deep. Um, uh, but the, the, the good news is that, um, you know, televisions in general are pretty snappy in terms of their responsiveness. Um, if you, if, for example, if your television, Sony or not, if you're, if you're having a, a, a not snappy experience, a couple of things you can consider doing. Think of modern televisions kind of like computers and smartphones. Sometimes they need to be rebooted. You know, sometimes you need to you need to flush out what, what everything that's running in memory. I'm not talking about deleting your apps. I'm just the stuff that's running in memory. So for the Sony TV, you know, you grab your remote, you press and hold the power button. And after about three seconds, you get a little pop up on the screen that says, you know, do you want to restart and hit that button? The TV will take, you know, two, three minutes and it will completely restart. So everything gets unloaded from memory and it's kind of starting fresh. Um, oh. The other thing you can always do is go in if apps are kind of misbehaving, just like your phone. You can go in and clear sometimes the cache, uh, you know, for those apps you know, kind of independently, if one yeah. app is really giving you a hard time. So think of, think of a modern computer, or sorry, a modern television, like a computer. Occasionally, you know, a restart is really helpful to reboot. Uh, and occasionally, just like your smartphone, going into a misbehaving app, clearing the cache, Worst case scenario, if an app is really misbehaving, uninstall it, reinstall it. That is kind of the way that you should think about your TV. And it will help you ensure you're getting a better experience. Um, one last little side pitch. Um, make sure you're doing firmware updates. Um, so that can be toggled on to automatically download in the background. Um, okay. But if you keep those up to date, keep your apps up to date, occasionally restart it, uh, it, should, it should be pretty snappy. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. You just taught me something new. I didn't, I, I just assumed once I hit the power button, it's off. So <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's just like your smartphone, right? It's just the screen that's turned off. The TV is still on, right? It's in uh, standby. I got to so, keep that in mind. Okay. Yeah, I wanna, haven't had any you issues you with it. Turn off the TV these days. You got to pull the plug out of the wall. Otherwise it's just, it's, it's waiting for you to be like, you know, hey, G word, I'm not going to say it because all my devices are listening, but hey, G man, don't say that. My you know, was talking to me earlier. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Very cool. I, I did not know that. Um, so as far as the TV tiers go, you're starting at the X90L, which begins that XR process. Right. And then what's the next one? Is it the 95? Or the then we have the, the 93 and the 95. Now I kind of bundle those together. Okay. Um, because they share the same processor, uh, mm -hmm. they'll share the same processor, processor with the X90. Um, there will be called mini LED. So the television you have is full array local dimming or FALD. Okay. And for those that may be watching that don't know very quickly, essentially with an LCD based television, I want you to think of an LCD television like a stained glass window, right? It doesn't matter how beautiful the stained glass is. If there's no light behind it, it's a pretty boring image. And so full array local dimming means that the, the light source behind the screen can dynamically do different things. So it can make bright parts of the screen brighter. It can help make dark parts of the screen darker. That's that's really all that's happening at a very high level. Uh, Mini LED is exactly the same thing. The difference is the size of the light sources. And um, with Mini LED, they're about five times smaller. And so you can have more of them within the same physical space. And so you have more granular control over what the kind of the light source is doing behind different elements of the screen. So the X93 and the X95 uh, both have this mini LED backlight. So it's a more dense backlight. Uh, we might use words like it's a more precise backlight. Um, it improves the overall contrast of the performance. Um, and then there are 
you know, a few differences between the 93 and the 95, some related to picture quality, some related to audio quality, some related to just the design and the overall TV enclosure that separate those two models. Uh, but I generally think of them as a tier together. It's full array local dimming at the X90L, so a significant improvement in contrast from the TVs that are below it. Uh, it also has the XR processor, so it's it's kind of firing on all cylinders. And then if you are kind of a more critical viewer, especially when it comes to contrast performance, uh, maybe you're really sensitive to uh, black level or, or blooming that you can see sometimes from uh, LCD-based televisions, then a more precise backlight uh, might be something that you're interested in. So the 93 uh, and the 95 then become part of the conversation. So we're at uh, full array and then mini LED. Where do we jump to OLED? So OLED, OLED's an interesting question because it, depending on who you talk to, for some consumers and certainly some reviewers in the tech space, um, there's a heavy just preference for OLED, right? And you can, and I'm totally fine with that, right? Customers are allowed to have a preference. Listen, it's your money and I want you to spend it and be happy with your purchase, right? Um, so from a, from a performance perspective, OLED delivers is very good contrast. That's essentially what it's known for. Mm -hmm. um, I just very briefly talked about how LCD televisions work. OLED, by comparison, rather than having a backlight, each pixel illuminates itself. So that's, there's no shared light. That means I can have you know a, uh, a very dark element and a very bright element right next to each other, and there's no bleed over of any of the light that that's you might see on LCD. So Again, the contrast is much more precise. Okay. But does that mean it is just hands down objectively better than LCD all the time? Uh, not really. Um, because one of the other differences that exists within television that's important is kind of peak brightness, how bright the image can get. Um, so it kind of depends on what you want to watch and where you're watching. If you primarily watch television, you know, in the middle of the day, and you like the lights on, and you've got windows, and you've got blinds open, then what happens is your, your pupils of your eyes, right, they'll expand a little bit, or sorry, they'll, they'll uh, uh, um, constrict a little bit, right? Your pupils mm -hmm. constrict. And so you become less sensitive to dark things and more sensitive to bright things. Your ability to see the luminous range moves up. And so I would skew you toward a brighter TV. If you view mostly at night, you know, you turn the lights off, you know, you're you're into the Netflix and chill or Amazon Prime and commitment, you know, whatever you want to, whatever you're talking about. Um, but you're viewing in, in a more, let's say, theatrical environment, uh, then, you know, your pupils will uh, open up. You become more sensitive to uh, the darker range of the of kind of the darker end of the luminous range. And I would say generally a television that produces better shadow detail, um, better black level, maybe is better for you. If you watch all the time, then you got to find a balance, right? Gotcha. And you've got to say, you know, is, is the best part of my day Judge Judy, people's court, two in the afternoon? Or mm -hmm. is the best part of my day, you know, Friday night, you know, me and my significant other sit down and we watch whatever, whatever big new thing has come out on, let's say, Netflix this week. Right, and it's kind of that's what we do. Um, so there's not really a right or wrong answer, and that's that's the that's the challenge with OLED to LCD is that for some people it's just no 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 OLED by far is is the better technology. Um, mm -hmm. For some consumers, no 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 LCD because of the brightness is by far the better technology. They're both right because those customers have different needs. So the way that I think of them though, from a general performance perspective, is that you have the X90, mm -hmm. and then when you 93 or the 95, I think OLED just overall lives about at that level. Uh, and then it's just a flavor kind of question. You know, which type of experience is better for you? Um, you know, the X90L is solid in its own right, um, but its peak brightness is a is is only a little bit brighter than an OLED, and the black level on an OLED is is better. Uh, so I would say that the the in the case of Sony, our A80L. So A is for OLED and X is for LCD. Um, 
that you have the X90, then you go to an X93 or 95, and an ADL is kind of living at that tier. It's just a fork in the road. Going gotcha. left to your Okay. Now you did mention like the type of content you're watching. I think this this is a highly underrated thing, very slept on, because I, I really hadn't heard about it until I got this TV, which is Bravia Core. How come how come there's no more talk? How come there's not enough talk about Bravia Core? Because I can notice I can like clearly notice the difference between streaming some content from Bravia Core from streaming from even Netflix, and I ha I got the version of Net Netflix where I pay extra for the Adobe Atmos yeah. and stuff. <laughs> I can't believe they're doing that to me, but I pay for it. And with Amazon, it's still a noticeably different level of quality. So could you kind of give us some insight on this Bravia Core stuff? Sure. So Bravia Core is a streaming service uh, that we've kind of developed in partnership with Sony Pictures and, and Sony TV. Um, first of all, we are not joining the streaming wars. Um, Sony's IP, you know, the content that we make, we do license out to streaming platforms, right? So you can watch, um, you know, various Sony movies in lots of places. Mm -hmm. But if you own a um, Sony Bravia XR television, then we've pre-installed an app called Bravia Core. And within that app, you can access primarily Sony IP Although there are occasionally um, uh, movies or TV shows that, that Sony did not make that we've added to that service. Uh, and you can then stream those. What Antoine is really talking about, one of the things that makes it really unique is um, something that we've developed that we call Pure Stream. Pure Stream allows uh, the app to basically run at 80 megabits per second. Um, you do need about 115 megabit per second kind of internet speed. Uh, to be able to get 80 megabit per second down to the television. But essentially, if you're able to turn that on within the Bravia Core app, that is on par, the video quality is on par with physical Blu-ray disc media. And so when you think about the general trade-off that we've made when it comes to streaming, um, this is the same for most people are probably old enough to remember this. Um, but if you think about the trade-off that basically Steve Jobs presented to the world with iTunes, right? In the original iPod. It was hyper convenience, but there was a notable drop in quality from you know, the audio track. MP3 is not as good as you know, what you were getting on CD. Right. But I can get all my music library in my pocket. Are you kidding me? Yeah. And we all absolutely you know, jumped at that and the whole market kind of shifted. And so there's always been kind of this trade-off between convenience and quality. Um, and that's what we largely the decision we still make today when it comes to streaming. Pure stream with Bravia Core kind of negates that pain point. You can have the convenience of streaming, but you can get the video quality and audio quality you know, associated with physical media. So we love the Bravia Core uh, experience. Um, we have expanded it. So it, it has been expanded now to PlayStation 5. Uh, as well. And um, although they're not really big in the US um, as, as much as they are in other countries, uh, even Sony Xperia smartphones um, can access this. Uh, so um, we're going to be kind of changing up the names here a little bit and it will be, um, you know, Sony, basically Sony Entertainment Core because it's not just on Bravia TVs, mm -hmm. but it will be exclusive to Sony devices. So um, as PlayStation kind of five owners, um, uh, start to experience it, then we expect more people to become kind of generally aware of uh, of what it is we're doing. Um, but again, it's not, this is not Sony's kind of take on, you know, we're going after Netflix. We're coming for you, Disney. It's like, that's, that's not what we're trying to do. We still license content to those streaming services. But for people who buy Sony products, we wanted to add um, like extra value to that yeah. experience uh, by giving them better access to Sony content. It is an added value. I'm telling you, you guys that have not, you know, you get your TV, you got your apps, your Netflix, your Hulu and stuff like that. And then you see something, you know, native or built in, it's probably a core. Oh, it looks cool. Then you never go back to it. Guys, if you have this on your TV, check it out. You will notice almost a stark difference in not even just the video quality, but the sound quality. You want to, if you've got Adobe Atmos set up, 
you're going to get Dolby Atmos. It is just, you know, and the IMAX enhanced stuff is, is really incredible too. It's really awesome, right? Yeah. So Dolby Atmos, DTSX, it's the largest library of IMAX content online is now available through, through Bravi Core. So, mm. you know, my general suggestion is this. Um, if, you're, if, you, if you know the movie you want to watch tonight is um, from Sony, go look to see if it's in Bravi Core, right? When you buy the television um, from Sony, Bravi X, our model, uh, you're going to get some, some uh, oh, one thing I should mention. So this, it's not a totally free service, right? Mm, uh, yeah. You get a number of credits uh, when you purchase the television, right? And a credit is a movie. And so you can go and make some initial purchases using those credits. Once you have used those credits up, then it becomes a, like a premium purchase slash norm premium rental kind of interface. And that's essentially, you know, kind of what, what it what it looks like. Um, but again, if you're if you're already in that space and you're like, well, it's a brand new movie, you know, so I could, you know, I'm looking to purchase it digitally or rent it. Um, if it's available on Bravia Core, um, you know, the quality is going to be really good. And then if it's not there, well, you know, then the other services kind of are available. So that's how I use it. Personally, mm -hmm. I just look to see if it's uh, on the service first. And I don't get a discount on Bravia Core. <laughs> I got my credit card and use my Google Pay, and I'm like, just do it. Let's, you know, let's okay. watch it. Well, here's a testament for me again about the Bravia Core. So, Gran Turismo, I saw it at uh, Sony Condo, and I was like, man, this is a good movie. And, and when I when it actually came for us to be able to stream and stuff, I already saw it. I think it was on maybe Netflix. I saw it there. And then, of course, I saw it on Bravia Core. Now, I have this the 65 inch TV on the wall. I drop. I have a 120 inch projector screen that drops down in front of it. Mm -hmm. I purposely chose to watch the TV on Bravia Core because the sound, the experience was so much more immersive watching it on Bravia Core on 65 inches than it would have been on than watching it on 120 inches. That's the testimony. <laughs> You know, yeah, and that's, 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 really that's good a quality. good point. That is a good point. You know, the um, there's there is a relationship to size to performance, and that's a whole other ball. You know, ball of ball of twine we could unravel at some point. Um, yeah. But I'm with you. Perhaps you. I can't remember if we talked about this last time we were together. Uh, I love television, but I like love projectors. Projectors oh, are like snap. that's okay. my jam. That's my jam right there. Yeah, I'm big into them. All right, we're going to have to talk then because I got some good stuff coming up. <laughs> yeah, got some good stuff coming up. We're, we're going to have to have another conversation. Hey, I'm down for it. I'm down. Yeah. So uh, I think, you know, when you when you, we, you started the premise of this conversation, right, what, are, what should a customer kind of kind of look at, what to consider? So uh, those, the processing and kind of the general contrast performance, um, for me, are kind of the two major perform, picture performance questions. Um, there are certainly other things to consider. Um, you know, if you're going to be using your television um, for audio, if you're not going to be using an outdoor device, if you're not going to be using a sound bar, if you don't have, you know, a receiver and component-based audio, you know, then how the TV sounds, you know, matters. Um, when you think about the last movie that you watched um, or the last – Last time you laughed when you watched a movie, or you, it was suspenseful. You're sitting there on the edge of your sheet of your of your seat. Um, you're biting your nails. You know you're covering your eyes. The emotion that's that you're feeling is a result much more of the audio experience than the video experience. Right? Mm -hmm. The video can be very kind of engaging, but it, remember there was a quote from Steven Spielberg, Spielberg when. Um, John Williams won his AFI Lifetime Achievement Award. And I'm paraphrasing, but he basically says, without John Williams, you know, Superman doesn't fly. You know, uh, you know, E.T. doesn't make your bicycle soar through the air. Um, the Empire isn't evil. It's like audio is, is kind of that key. And so, again, if you're, when you're shopping in for a television, and if you're just going to be using the TV for your audio, then I would be giving also consideration to the audio experience because – Having, I don't want to say poor because you know, um, but but unimpressive or not impactful audio uh, can really take you out of it. And so, 
Um, when it comes to, for example, when, when it comes to the Sony televisions, um, one of the things that we do, just, just we are adding speakers <laughs> as you step through the line. So in the TV, you have the X90L, you know, that television has essentially woofers and then what we call sound positioning tweeters that are about three quarters of the way up on the TV that kind of fire outward, right? So it, it raises the kind of acoustic positioning of the overall audio. So it's more in the center of the screen. It's better for dialogue, mm -hmm. um, that kind of experience. If you were to go to the X93 or X95, that's adding subwoofers and multiple amplifiers for those different sets of speakers for you know more clarity and more sound separation. Uh, are the are the kinds of things that you can still do even within a TV lineup to say as you step up how can we improve the experience? So for audio, it's more speakers, uh, discrete amplifiers, um, better kind of sound separation. Uh, so that is something that I also generally recommend you know people at least you know, give thought to. I think all too often when you go and you talk to a salesperson, we're so hyper-focused on like picture quality, mm -hmm. that we forget that you can have the, you can have perfect picture quality. And if you, the audio is just, you know, objectively bad, it's like, I don't think that's a good package overall. You need yeah. to find a better balance between those two, those two sides. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Oh man. Well, Rob, you give me a lot of time today. Um, and a lot of info. You schooled me a couple times too. I knew this was going to happen. I knew you were the man to talk to. And I hope everybody else got a lot from this. Um, we don't. We don't want to make it too long because I don't want to take up too much of your time. Hopefully, we can chat again. Maybe going into the projectors or even even into the audio, the soundbar segments of things. That'd be great. <clears throat> Excuse me. But uh, yeah, man, I just want to say thanks for your time and all the the knowledge you've given us today. And hopefully, we get to talk to you again soon at some point. Well, listen, it was my pleasure. I would love to do this again. You just tell me the time and the place and the topic and I'll be there. You know, we'll have a great time. All right, man. Well, once again, I appreciate you and all y'all out there watching. I appreciate y'all tuning in, giving us the time. Y'all keep being good to each other and we'll see you when we see you.